Okay, today I want to look at a really cool system monitoring tool. It's a command line tool, which is great if you've got a Raspberry Pi or it works just by any version of Linux, especially good if you're connecting via a secure shell. You connect to a remote machine and you want to see what's going on using this monitoring tool. It's called BTOP and I'm going to explain about it all today. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, what do I mean by a system monitoring tool? Well, the classic one is called TOP, uh, and this I've been using this for like 30 years. It comes on all flavors of, of Unix and Linux, of course. And at the top here, it shows you a kind of summary of the CPU usage and the memory usage. And then here you have a kind of a list of the processes that you can sort by CPU use, memory use, and so on. The next kind of came along HTOP, uh, kind of a nicer version of it. Same, similar idea here. Now you've got graphs showing you the CPU usage, the memory usage, and you've still got this list of processes that are bouncing up and down here that you can sort. And I use HTOP a lot as well, but there's a kind of a Rolls-Royce version, and that's called BTOP. Now, we'll go into it in a second, but how do you install BTOP? Well, basically, it's the old classic uh, sudo apt install BTOP, just as simple as that. It will install it on your Raspberry Pi. Now, that's the install method for Ubuntu or Debian based uh, distributions. If you're using something else, use the normal package manager that you'd have, and it's probably still called BTOP on that as well. Okay, to launch it, you just type BTOP, and you're now presented with a similar idea. You've got the different resources that are being used on your system shown here uh, in a kind of a fancy uh, display. Now at the top here, you've got the CPU usage. You can see not much going on because I'm not doing anything on my Raspberry Pi at the moment. So this is very low. And over here on the right, you can see C0, C1, C2, C3. That's all the different uh, CPU cores. Uh, and they're all at 0% at the moment. Here you've got the memory over on the left, you've got the disks, down at the bottom left you've got the uh, network, and then you've got this list of processes similar to top uh, and htop. Now, let me try something, I'll start running something and you can see how it affects this display. So I'm gonna run a tool, my thread test tool, you can find the source code for it in my GitHub repository, that stresses the CPU. I'm gonna do it on two cores first of all. Let me just kick that off. Okay, so that's now running, and we can see here now that this CPU usage has started to be going up. You can see it says it's 50% usage. Why 50%? Because it's using two of the four cores, so that's 50%, and you can see the cores showing here 100% usage. And you can also see here in the list of processes, thread test tool, 200% uh, out of 400%. Okay, that's now finished, so that's dropped off and we can see the graph now dropping down. Let me run it again now with four uh, cores. Okay, and then we'll see a greater bump up here. Here we go, right up there. Bump up, 100% CPU usage uh, across all of the cores. You can see here 400% over uh, in this list of uh, programs that are running. So there you go. So that's how you can see the CPU uh, running and how it comes up on your display. So if you see something is taking up a, a lot of uh, CPU time, you can say, well, what's that running? What is a, has a process gone crazy? Has my email server gone crazy? Has my database server gone crazy? You know, whatever, what, what's gone wrong? And you can start to have a look at that there. But of course, that's just CPU. There's more to a system than that. So let's look at memory. If I was to run a large language model, that's going to load a lot of stuff up into memory and we're going to see the memory usage increase. Let me just try that. Uh, uh, run. Okay, so what we'll see over here now in the memory usage, we should see that go up. Now we can make that disks thing go away by pressing D that will make the disk go away. And we can see here now that the used memory is going up. And we can see here it's now at 4.7 gigabytes. The available memory has gone down. Okay, and then that memory model is actually loaded. And if you look over here on the processes, you can see there's 2.8 gigs being used by, by Olama. So that's exactly what we would expect. Okay, let me just stop that. And uh, that should then free up all that memory. Let's see, okay, yep, there we go. That's now gone up to 7.3 gigabytes and the memory uh, usage has gone right back down again. And you can see that chunk of memory there that was being used has been freed up and we're back to normal memory usage. Now, if you press D again, the disks 
uh, will will come back. Now let's say I wanted I was copying some files or something like that. What how does that show on the on the disk I/O? Well, first of all, we can see here that the look at two gigs is being written uh, read and write to here. If you press I you'll actually get a, a better graph of read versus write. So you can see that happening here. Up and down really is what it's showing there. Read, write, writing to the disk, reading from the disk. And so you can see there's the, the activity going on there. So again, a good way of saying, well, what's going on? Why is there so much activity? Why is my system feeling slow? You can just actually go in there and see what's happening. The same also true for networking. Let's actually download a new LLM, which is going to be, you know, several gigabytes, and uh, that's going to cause the uh, the networking to start being used. So here, same thing here, a graph that's been basically fat, but here you can go, look at that, it's downloading, now I'm currently downloading at 20 uh, megabytes a second, so it's showing you that there, and you've got all the statistics going on here of what's, what's going on. So a great way of understanding what's going on on your system, you can see that uh, there's not you know, a little bit of CPU being used as I'm doing that, a little bit of uh, disk I.O., not much memory being used, but lots of network. So, of course, in any system, you've got CPU, memory, disk I.O., and network I.O., four major things. Any of them can be used. Of course, a system is really under a lot of stress. All four are being used at the same time. But being a system administrator or being someone who has to look after a Raspberry Pi or any other kind of Linux or Unix box, having this information at your fingertips is really useful. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.